Good evening all. Welcome to this new session. We will try to see some top three differential diagnosis. So there will be some pathologies with similar imaging appearances, but the diag diagnosis differential diagnosis will be there and the diagnosis will be different. So we will try to see some cases with similar imaging appearance. So here this is the first case where you can see there is hyperdense uh, collection noted along the uh, sylvian fissures in the basal cisterns, in the permeal cisterns and along the tenteral leaf. So this was a case of SAH. So this is subarachnoid hemorrhage in a case of hypertensive patient. So similar imaging appearance in other case where you can see there is diffuse cerebral edema and the relatively hyperdense hyperdensity of the sylvian fissure fox and along the tentoral leaves so this is relative hyperdensity along the tentoral leaves and along the fox and in, along the sylvian fissures in a case of diffuse cerebral edema or, or in case of hie siculae so this is also similar imaging appearance but the differential diagnosis is different and this is the other case where you can see this is the post contrast study the present patient presented with fever you can see enhancing x rays that is hyperdense enhancing x rays along the fox along the sylvian fissures along the permeal cisterns and the tentorial tentorial leaves so all the three are imaging appearance are similar similar imaging appearance but the di diagnosis is different so first one is sah second one is pseudo sah appearance third one is spider leg appearance or enhancing basal x rays in tubercular meningoencephalitis Next coming to the other case, this is a one interesting case where you can see the patient presented with altered sensorium and uh, scissors. You can see there is hyperintensity is noted in bilateral mesial temporal lobes and incidentally there are bilateral dermoids. So whenever you see bilateral dermoids in a case with uh, encephalitis like features, definitely suspect anti-N methyl D aspartic acid receptor encephalitis that is anti-NMD receptor encephalitis which is a autoimmune limbic encephalitis with antibodies against the NMD receptors which is common in young females and in 60% of cases you will try you can see your variant teratomas so the common top three differential in this case are you can see this is uh, this is the similar case that is anti n methyl d aspartic acid receptor encephalitis this is nothing but hsv encephalitis where you can see there are hyper intensities in inferior temporal lobes and also along the amygdala and hippocampi and also this other case of limbic encephalitis so how to differentiate these psychiatric symptoms and association with perineoplastic syndromes and tumors are unique for autoimmune encephalitis or perineoplastic limbic encephalitis whereas acute onset of fever and absence of basal ganglia involvement on mri support the diagnosis of herpes simplex encephalitis or herpetic encephalitis so these nothing but form the top differential diagnosis for anti nmd receptor encephalitis Next, this is the other case uh, where you can see three different cystic lesions present in the neck which has similar imaging appearance. Here, this is a cystic lesion in the neck extending into the peritoxpital regions, typically giving the bag of form appearance. And also, you can see there are tar target sign noted here. You can see target sign noted in, the ca in this case. This other case where you can see the target appearance. So, this is a classical case of plexiform neurofibroma. And similar imaging appearance can be also seen in uh, other case. This is also other case with similar imaging appearance. This is also a cystic lesion with multiple septae and also sometimes you can see fluid fluid levels. So this is a cystic lesion in the neck in a child with fluid fluid levels. This is classical of lymphangioma. Another cystic lesion in the vicinity which has similar imaging appearance but different diagnosis is hemangioma. You can see multiple cystic spaces in the neck with flow voids and also sometimes phleboliths. So and also sometimes you can see this is other case where you can see feeding vessel. So the first one case is a plexiform neurofibroma target sign. Second one is lymphangioma with fluid fluid levels. Third one is hemangioma where you can see flow voids, pleboliths and feeding vessels. So these are three common cystic uh, lesions in the neck or soft tissues you can remember. And this is the common ovarian lesions where you can see this is the first case where you can see this is a cystic lesion with multiple internal septations which gives the classical uh, fishnet appearance and this is the other case where you can see cystic lesion with multiple low level echoes giving the classical sand bag appearance and this is the other case third case where you can see cystic lesion with uh, hair on dead dot appearance and also you can see iceberg phenomena there is ecogenic lesion with post acoustic shadowing with iceberg phenomena so these are the common three cystic lesions you can encounter in this practice so first one case is nothing but the hemorrhagic cyst second is nothing but the endometriotic cyst Third one is imaging appearance is dermoid cyst. These, these form the three top, top three differential diagnosis for this imaging spectrum in cystic lesions of the ovary. 
next here also you can see there are three lesions of the parotid this is fat containing lesion of the parotid completely replacing the left parotid gland and partly in the right this is parotid lipoma and sometimes in infants you can classically see bilateral parotid glands are enlarged which are replaced by hyperdense para hyperdense tissue these are nothing but parotid hemangiomas and sometimes you can see both parotid glands are enlarged with multiple tiny cystic lesions scattered in both parotid glands which is nothing but lymphoepithelial cyst so this is the top differential diagnosis for these parotid lesions that is parotid lipoma this is parotid hemangioma and this is parotid benign lymphoepithelial lesions or BLL which can be seen in HIV then it's called uh, para, uh, AIDS related parotid cyst and sometimes in jogrine it is called as um, uh, lymphoepithelial cyloadenitis. So uh, remember HIV and jogrines can present with lymphoepithelial cyst. Next this is the last case where you can see there is a clear hypodense cystic lesion uh, in note, hypodense lesion noted in the breast in the inferior quadrant with thin wall this is a breast lipoma this is iso2 hypodense lesion in the breast parenchyma well defined with capsule this is fibroadenoma and this is other lesion where you can see both hypodense hypodense t and also even calcifications and giving classical breast in breast appearance that is fibroadenolipoma or hamartoma so first case is lipoma second case is fibroadenoma and third case is fibroadenolipoma or hamartoma that is breast in breast appearance thank you all